boy MC. Welcome back to the channel. We're here in the clinic right now. Um, I'm just bringing another uh, informational video for you guys, showing you what I'm working on. Um, I think on the last video I told you guys that I was going to uh, make a video on removing a transmission on the 2003 Honda Civic I had uh, come in, but um, I just did it real fast. I wanted to knock it out. It's kind of like an emergency uh, swap deal. Um, the customer, we had, I had, he ordered the transmission and it, uh, it came in, you know, a couple weeks ago, but I was tied up with other things. But um, so I want to just bring them in and knock it out because this transmission was uh, slipping a bit and um, it, this is a daily driver. So um, so I didn't do any recording and none of that. I did take a lot of pics and I posted on my um, the Instagram page. Um, by the way, uh, the Instagram page name did change. I changed it up. So um, the new one is Honda underscore Acura underscore clinic. Um, this is the clinic, you know, I'm the Honda doctor. This is what I do, I've been doing it for a while. Um, so I feel, I feel like it was right to just do a little change up here. Um, but uh, what I got here is a Integra that I've been working on for a while. Um, did a lot of work to it. Um, a lot of people have kind of, from stories, a lot of people have touched this and uh, done a lot of stuff to it. But uh, anyways, what I do, I'm getting it right to what I've seen that is wrong. But um, I've done a lot of work to it, but what I was doing recently was I had to take the cylinder head off here. Um, I had a bad oil leak in the back here, and uh, it wasn't like the VTEC solenoid or the distributor leaking. Um, so I popped the head off, and I saw a couple things that were wrong. Um, this is a B20 VTEC, and so when they did the VTEC conversion, it just kind of was done uh, not 100% correctly. Um, I found like the dowel pins were installed wrong. I uh, used the OEM head gasket, which is some people can use it. Some people say they've had leaks with it. Um, there's a couple of spots that don't really match up right with the OEM head gasket for the B20 versus like a, a VTEC head gasket. But um, so I got the uh, the actual Kometic B20 VTEC conversion head gasket installed on it now. And um, for the oil feed line, it was just a rubber hose feeding oil to um, like a bar fitting on the cylinder head. So I got a uh, Blocks Racing sandwich plate that's uh, bolted on the back of the block now where the oil filter is and I uh, got a nice, um, you know, still braided line. I'm gonna go to the back of the head now. Um, um, I took pics of all that too and I can post those at the end of the video or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, just a lot of stuff was wrong with, you know, what was going on with the whole setup. And a big thing that I did notice, I can show you guys, I took lots of pics of that as well. Um, I was going to throw some Pro 1 camshafts in here, which is a lot lot bigger than uh, it's running GSR cams right now. But, um, so in order to do larger cams, I was going to have to um, do some work on the pistons to make sure that there was no valve to piston clearance issues. But um, when I had the head off and I was looking at the tops of the pistons, there was already contact with the valves uh, in the piston already with the GSR cams in there. Um, and I found that the pistons are that uh, were used for the build, they're like a stock replacement B, uh, B20 pistons, but the cast was just not exactly the same as like OEM. So um, I think that was causing to already hit just regardless because the reliefs, um, I gotta, here. So uh, this is a piston right here. This is pretty much, this is a, this is a LS uh, B18 B1 piston. But, um, so right here, these are your valve reliefs right here. And on the B20, they're pretty small, a lot smaller. And, um, as well as on this other pist the pistons that are used, it was actually, um, made a little different here as well, um, uh, compared to like an OEM piston. So what I did, I, gr I got my Dremel and I made these valve reliefs a lot bigger because it was already contact. But I still, I don't feel safe running the Pro 1 cams in here. Um, for one because yeah I made these larger um, but the so comparing these the GSR camshafts to like the Skunk 2 Pro 1's the Pro 1's are like the lift if you're measuring it like millimeters the lift is almost well on the intake side is it's like two millimeters more lift and on the exhaust it was over two millimeters uh, of lift compared to the GSR cam so that means that the valves come out of the cylinder head a lot more than you know the with the so pretty much, I didn't want to run into any issues. I mean, I could clay the motor, um, which is, you know, put clay on top of here, uh, lock VTEC, put the cylinder head back on, um, put the time up back on, turn the motor over, and check 
uh, see how much the valves pushed in the clay and measure the clay. But um, the customer, uh, what, I, what I just figured out we're going to do, we're not going to run the Pro 1s. Um, and another reason why I don't want to run the Pro 1 camshafts is just seeing what kind of some of the stuff was done wrong to begin with. I don't really trust, I didn't build the bottom end, so I don't trust that the bottom end is going to take, you know, revving up a little bit higher um, for the Pro 1 cams and also, you know, um, a good amount of boost. Because we do want to turbocharge this. Uh, we have a nice Go Auto Works turbo kit that is just waiting to go on here. But um, I, we've ran into so many things that were wrong and done wrong that need to be fixed. Uh, need to be addressed before you know trying to turbo this thing but i'm not sure about if you know who if they did the piston ring uh you know the ring gap correctly for a boosted application i'm not sure so i don't want to push this engine to its max limits uh and i didn't build the bottom end pretty much so we can save the pro ones for a different bottom end i can build you know we can do a ls bottom end gsr bottom end something we'll do ford's rods force pistons you know, this is a built head already. All I gotta do is throw the cams in it. We'd have a fully built motor um, to go with his turbo kit, you know, if we want to. But uh, I'm just finishing this thing up. I'm getting it back on the road for him. Um, and it's just gonna, you know, it'll have no oil leaks. We won't be, you know, the GSR cams won't even, you know, the valves won't even be touching the pistons because like I said, there was already contact. Um, so when he was hitting VTEC, you know, when he was already popping VTEC, the, the valves were touching, you know, so. Um, I'm gonna put it back together. I've already, you know, put the head on it. I didn't, you know, record any of that. Um, but I still gotta torque it down. So I'll torque the head down, finish up the VTEC uh, conversion with the line here, and um, just put everything back together. And I do have a coil on plug kit that I will put on, and then we can, you know, ship it off. We won't have to do any tuning with the coil on plug. It's just pretty much uh, plug and play. Um, we got the kit from Jason Waters, and he already uh, converted the ECU for it and everything. So it's ready to go. And I have uh, some K-Series Denso coils for them. But um, I think we have the Speed Factory, the Sugar Cap, and the Speed Factory little plate that'll go on top of the valve cover. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna finish it up and get it back on the road for them. And uh, just, you know, a lot more fresher, no oil leaks, you know, not having contact with your pistons. You know, we're just trying to narrow this thing down and not have any issues. I've done a lot of work to it. We put AC back in this thing. I swapped out the radiator. Um, I fixed a lot of things that were wrong with it. Um, I got this car months ago. Uh, it wasn't even running. Um, some people couldn't get it running. I don't know the whole story, but I got it running for him, and he drove it for a while. And I told him to bring it back when, uh, you know, once he drives it a bit, put some miles on it, and you know, address any more issues that come up. And he's brought it back to me, and that's where we're at. You know, we're trying to fix this massive oil leak. And uh, like I said, I saw that the V this head was popped on, and. Uh, it wasn't really done right, so I got it right with a nice VTEC conversion kit, uh, head gasket valve pins, uh, everything is tapped correctly. The bottom of the head, so the bottom of the head, you have to tap it with a plug as well, and um, the plug that came out of it was, I don't know if it was sealing good anyway, so I re-tapped it, and I put a different plug in it with some sealant, and it should be fine, so that was probably the leak, because like I said, it was back here in the back of the head, and it was dripping down and running down to the uh, front of the block. But uh, I'm going to get it right, and I always do. If you guys know me or follow me, you know that I do a lot of good work, and um, it doesn't leave here until it's right, so let's get it.
I got the head studs torqued down, all of them torqued down to 80 foot pounds. Um, so that's good. So on the last, on the, you know, so that the second step, um, and then the third step, that last step is 80 foot pounds. And I don't know if, if you guys watched my other video, but, um, um, the B18, the LSV tech that I was rebuilding, uh, they were stripped. Some of them got stripped out. Oh, excuse me. Some of them got stripped out. So I had to do the, uh, the, the time circuits and repair the block. So man, when I was doing that last one, I'm always just wary now that I've had a couple stripped out on me. Um, I'm always been wary about it. So, uh, but all these tore down good. Um, didn't have any like creaking, no weird sounds, uh, popping or nothing. So, um, I'm, you know, happy that I didn't do any issues with that. I mean, sometimes it happens though. So, but yeah. before you put the cam shafts back on and you put the cam caps in um, you always you you want to clean these surfaces up real good where these cam caps are going to be um, because you're going to put some Honda bond here on the corners I mean uh, on the matting surfaces uh, where the caps are going to be because if you don't it's going to leak oil there all the time so uh, you want to make sure these are nice and cleaned up um, you get all the old you know gasket stuff off of there um, and the same with the caps that you put on, you want to turn them upside down, you want to get all the, the stuff off of there too, get, it, get that matting surface nice and good when you put the caps back on. So uh, all these cam caps, I've cleaned them off. Um, like I said, the surface has to be cleaned just like the surface of the head. Um, you know, when you clean it, you'll, there'll be a lot of, depending on who did it, how sloppy they did it, but um, in this case, it was everywhere. But um, you'll have to get a razor blade and get all that off, and then I like to um, go over it with my little wire wheel um, just to get it nice and smooth, <clears throat> to, you know, nice, clean metal. But um, then you wanna put the contact points, you wanna get your Honda Bond, and put it on the contact points here where, where it contacts the, the um, cylinder head. So you want to put it there and there. And then um, before I do that though, before I put all these caps on, there is an O-ring on the VTEC cylinder head, on the B-series VTEC. There is an O-ring here that sometimes will get pretty flat. And uh, what you want to do is replace that O-ring as well. Um, if that O-ring is really flat and um, uh, it's not uh, sealing anymore. There will be oil pressure. Um, there will be oil coming out, and you'll lose oil pressure to the VTEC. And um, a lot of times you'll have VTEC issues, VTEC cutting in and out, or possibly VTEC uh, not working as well. So I just take this little O ring out. It has a small little O ring, and just replace it. So I have a couple here. I'm gonna see which one fits the best. That one's, this one feels a little big, nope, fits perfect, you just squeeze it in there, um, but yeah, that way we don't have any issues, um, sometimes when people do head jobs, they'll take everything out, and um, when you're going back in, you won't know, you won't think about replacing that little o-ring, and I'm um, wondering why VTEC, you're having issues with VTEC, you know, you'll think that the solenoid's not working right or um, something like that. So um, I've had that happen before already. And 
And also, there'll be numbers on these caps here. It'll go one, two, three, four, like that. So this will be number four. It'll go here. Number three would go here. You can see three is the one that had the, the O-ring position right there. But um, yeah, but before I do that, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna pour some oil on top of this, uh, cam on top of the camshafts. That way it'll be in the journals, fresh oil, before I put these caps on. Those are the contact points that you want to put Honda Bond on. Ultra flange or Honda Bond. And I put some on there as well on, on that contact point too. Clean them off good too as well. Get any you know dirt or grime, oil grime, anything off of them. Set them down there like that. All right, so now that we got the uh, camshafts uh, torqued down correctly um, to spec, now we can uh, set these where they need to be, slap the belt back on, and continue to put everything back together. Um, I will be doing a valve adjustment on this um, just to make sure that the valve lash is good. I don't believe I did a valve adjustment, you know, uh, a while ago on it. I think it just, uh, whoever put this engine together has done the valve adjustment. So I will redo the valve adjustment for, before I pop the valve cover on and uh, start this thing up. So now that I got the timing belt back on, cam sort down, uh, now I can spin the motor over, I can adjust the valves, the valve lash. Um, what I do is uh, I just do the minimum setting. Uh, for intake, it's uh, six to seven thousandths. Um, exhaust, seven to eight thousandths. I always just do the small one, which is, I'll do six here, seven here, but I don't put it extremely tight. I just put it you know, nice and snug where I feel a slight drag between and um that's it so and this just takes part uh this takes practice makes perfect pretty much um when you're doing valve lash uh you'll have to just feel for it you'll know what is tight what is not 
and uh, it just takes it just takes practice. So um, I'll be adjusting one. You do it in the firing order. You adjust cylinder one. You adjust number three, four, and then two. So we do number one at top dead center. I'll spin the motor over um, a quarter of a turn, and I'll do three. You spin the motor over another quarter of a turn. That'll put it on bottom dead center. You'll do four, and then you'll spin it again, um, and you'll do number two at last. So we're gonna just check. We're on top dead center here. We're gonna do number one, and check the valve lash. See, these are pretty tight. This one's not tight, but that one is tight. Let me check this. See, to me, those are loose. They go in and out pretty easy. So, I do here. So you can see um, I've got it on uh, top dead center for number three now. If it were stock cam gears, you know, you'd have your arrow, um, the arrows that are usually up top when the top dead center. So this arrow, all, um, all the arrows, the tops of the cam gears, all the arrows are going directly to the front of the engine lined up with the cylinder head. So we're top, we're top dead center on number three right now. And then I'm going to adjust number three. And then um, when it's time to do number four, I'll spin it again. You just, you know, you spin it on the crank right there. I'll spin it another quarter of a turn, and all the arrows will be pointing down. That'll be top dead center for number four. And then when I do number two, when I spin it enough, when I spin it again, all the arrows will be pointing to that way, which will be top dead center for number two. And then once you spin it again, boom, top dead center number one. All the arrows will be pointing just like up. So, um, yeah, that's, that'll be the valve adjustment. And what, am I, and what I'm doing here when I'm adjusting the valve, so what I do here is, see, this is your adjusting nut here, and you got the adjusting screw. So what, th what this tool does, it has a 10 millimeter on the end and a screwdriver inside of it. So what you do, you loosen it up, you move the adjusting screw with the screwdriver, and, um, but what I'm doing here, what I'm feeling for is when you put, let's do it on number three right here. So when you put this filler, this is a filler gauge, number seven. When you put the filler gauge in between the lobes here, it should go in. You see that is very tight. I don't even go in. And this is, and, th and this is seven thousandths, which is the lowest setting. So it goes one, three, four, two, when you adjust it. You see that the the cam the profile, you see the profile, the, the profile of the cam is pointing up. So you should be able to put this inside there, and I can't. So I can't even put it in there. So what I'll do, I'll set it in there. You can set it in from the back side. You'll set it in. I'll loosen this up. I'll loosen that nut up, and I'll back the screw up just a little bit, and so I can fit my filler gauge in there, and then I'll. I'll you do the filler gauge in and out until you can feel a slight drag going in and out. That's how you do a valve adjustment. But yeah, these are too tight. I wonder how this, uh, if the intake side is too tight as well. So the intake side, I can't even put the intake side in. So they're all just too tight. They're all not right. So 
I'll get it right though. So just give you an idea. So when I showed you earlier, I couldn't put this in. You see how I can put it in there now, and I can and I can go back and forth. Pretty much the clearance between the rocker, the clearance between the rocker and the cam is what you're trying to get right. If the clearance between this rocker, you know what what the cam pushes down in. So if they're too tight. Then you can wear your uh, you can wear your rockers out your rocker assembly out. Um, you can have poor uh, fuel mileage, poor performance, with them being either way too loose or way too tight. When they're way too tight, the valves won't close all the way. So you could tighten these down. You could tighten these valves way too tight to where they'll actually push out of the head. And when um, when the valves are supposed to close back inside the head, they don't even close all the way. So um, anyways, this is very crucial. Uh, valve adjustment is very crucial. But uh, as you can see now, I'm able to put that in there. I'm able to slide that in and out with a slight drag. So. All right, so now you can see we've got the cam gears right here. They're all pointing all the way down, the tops of them. So we're on top dead center on number four piston. So meaning um, we can, cause you cannot adjust valves. I'll show you right now. So you have to adjust the valves with um, the cam lobe. All right, you see the tops of the lobe, the cam lobe has to be pointing up away from the rocker arm right here. You cannot adjust the valves with the cam, you know, the high part of the lobe actually pushing down onto the rockers. They have to be, the lobes have to be pointing up away from the rockers for you to adjust the valves. To get the proper clearance. So I've just did uh, cylinder number four. All of those are good. Now I'm gonna spin the uh, mo engine over uh, another quarter turn. And we so we've done one, three, four. Now you go back to number two to do the last one. And then um, I'll turn it back to top dead center for number one and just check number one again, just to make sure. But um, yeah, that's how you do that. One, three, four, and then two. Valve lash. So on uh, cylinder number two as well, they're just too tight. I can't even get the minimum. Like I say, I, do, I always use the minimum. So it's supposed to be six thousandths on the intake, seven thousandths on the exhaust. I can't even put them in there. Um, so they're just too tight. Like I said, that, that can cause premature wear on uh, parts as well as uh, performance as well.
All right, so now that we got all the valves adjusted correctly, um, as you can see, a lot of them were tight. Um, sometimes I was, you know, it took me a bit to get it right how I wanted it to feel. But um, yeah, all these are adjusted now. I can put the valve cover back on and um, do the, uh, put the coil on plug plate, put the coils in there and uh, finish up. You know, I got to still put the uh, VTEC solenoid on, put this cap in and um, just button up everything else. But uh, yeah. These are uh, critical things that you have to do, though, in order uh, to do these B-series right, man. You know, you can't, you can't adjust the valves wrong. You can't have them way too tight or way too loose. Um, it's just not going to perform right. But, uh, yeah, I'm just getting this thing right, um, doing things that I know what to do, how to do it right, and uh, get this thing not having any more issues. Like I said, oil leaking, um, performance. Uh, longevity uh, messing up parts because as you can see this is a built head this already has um super tech valve springs and retainers and stuff so these are very stiff springs um but anyways you don't want the valve lash to be way too tight on these cams even though these are gsr cams you don't want it to be too tight regardless even if it was stock um too tight of uh, valve lash is bad uh loose is bad as well um so either way Get your valve lash done right. Um, Honda recommends doing this every hundred thousand miles, but when you beat on these things like B series, when you you know when you beat on them, um, I adjust my valves if you know quite often besides just a hundred thousand. Um, you know, like I said, you do a lot of racing, uh, you do a lot of pulls, whatever you want to do, you beat it, you take it to the track. You always want to check your valve lash every now and then to make sure everything is still good. All right, uh, before you put the valve cover on, um, you want to put your uh, Honda bun. All right, before we pop this valve cover on, what you want to do is you see these little flat, pot, uh, flat spots here. You want to put your Honda bun or ultra flange here, 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 and here, as well as on the other side, here, 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 and here. Um, what that is, that is pretty much right here when you when you put down the valve cover, that's just putting a gasket here in these corners of the, of the caps. Um, as you can see, how I've, uh, when I seal these caps, you see there's a nice little thin line of Honda Bond through there. That's how it should look when you seal that correctly. As you can see on each side. But uh, what you wanna do is just put a little dab on each of those corners and just smear it. You just want a light coat of it and then you can put the valve cover on and torque it down. We got these nice Speed Factory Racing goodies here. This is um, all the parts that we need to do the uh, coil on plug conversion here for the B-Series. So what we have, we'll pretty much be using coils instead of the uh, traditional distributor with the um, distributor cap and then the spark plug wires. We'll just have coils. Um, pretty much newer technology, better spark, more efficient spark, uh, better for you know high horsepower, high RPM. Um, the spark is just a lot better when you use the coils um, but yeah this is a uh, you will put this where your um, distributor cap was you just take the plastic cap off put that on there we're gonna put this plate here and then you install the coils on top of the plate and then uh, we have this wiring harness I got this from Jason Waters um, pretty nice right here it's just a conversion so I'll have to wire it up um, it'll wire up to your distributor plug and then it'll go, uh, I'll put into the firewall and it'll plug into the ECU and it'll be ready to go. Pretty simple, man, but, uh, it's pretty nice, pretty nice parts right here. But yeah. Make a big difference on tuning and, uh, you know, just, you know, when you're high horsepower or, you know, high RPM revving, uh, these sparks, the spark will be, uh, spot on, you know, with coils.
is your distributor with the wires. Um, pretty simple here. We'll just take the wires. Uh, we'll take the cap off and the wires, and you'll be replacing all this with this uh, cap right here. And then we'll plug in the harness and uh, route the harness where it's supposed to go. All right. So now we'll have to take the coil out. And um, we'll take this rotor button out as well because you'll no longer need this or this uh, because pretty much you'll have your coils here. You have to take this off. This this pretty much, this is your one big coil inside the distributor, but you're, you're having four individuals on each cylinder. But um, in this right here, you won't need this because this touches the contact points on the um, distributor cap. So this will have to come off as well. And then I'll just put it on like that. So I went over there and I um, I put a slit in there with the wheel, cutting wheel, so I can put a flathead on there and try to get good leverage on it. It's coming, but it's very tight. I'm untightening it way too much or C's in there, but it's coming. Also, we want to take this out too. Ignition control module. So uh, to finish off the distributor, um, I'll just remove these wires actually. I'll just pull them through um, because the supplied harness actually comes with the power wire and the signal wire that I'm gonna try to put in this connector right here and it'll connect uh, connect into the harness, this, the factory harness like that. So I'm gonna try to do it like that. I'm gonna remove this and slide it through though, these wires, these extra wires. Get this out of my way, we don't need that anymore. this one through so after I pull the after I've got these wires pulled I'm gonna cut them here I'm gonna pull them through then I can put the cap on and then I'll wire it up uh, right here at this connector here but I do want to try to connect it I do want to try to put the harness into this connector here so I'll cut here and here pull that through This one, yeah, I'll just, I'll just cut that. We won't need that. Or I can depin it. I can take the pin out, possibly. If I'm able to depin this, this is an aftermarket connector. I don't know if I can take this. Should be able to take this little locking thing off. Depend tool here. I'll just push them out. All right, so I got all these wire. I got these three wires depend from this connector here. Um, I'm safe to go ahead and put this cap on like that. 
I'll have to get the screws from the other cap. I can put that on and then I can go ahead and do the connections, uh, the power and the RPM signal in here. And um, I'm a, I'm a, the harness should, I should be able to pin it right through there and it'll plug into the stock harness and it'll be nice and clean. So that's how that looks nice, pretty clean. Um, so we got the coil out, we got the ICM, the igniter out, uh, the little rotor button thing, and all the harness, um, you know, the little three wires that I needed to pull out. And I'll go ahead and try to put the other connector in here, and plug it in, and that, that'll be completed uh, coil unplug kit right there. That's what's up. Sorry about that. My phone died uh, while I was putting in the harness, but um, it was pretty simple. Um, pretty much you just plug all the coil packs in to the harness, run the harness down here. It had a ground wire coming off the harness, grounded here to the ear of the distributor here where you got your 12 millimeter bolt. And then those two wires that I was talking about, about pinning, I just put them inside the connector um, inside of the distributor connector there and then that'll contact and actually look at this I'm actually gonna do that because if you see someone uh, not someone I'm sorry but uh somehow there is a, a this thing is almost split in half that's the rpm signal but anyways so you got your ground there I mean you got your power there 12 volt and you got your signal and it's going to there as well that is the harness that came with the kit right there so Everything is plugged in. And so this part of the harness, it, they give you plenty of room. I mean, uh, plenty of slack. This will go inside the car and this will be plugged into the uh, ECU side. So, um, but yeah, so that'll be like that there. I can tuck it away a little bit, but yeah, that's pretty much what you're looking at right there. Coils on, harness in, wired up. That's pretty clean. Like I said, uh, this engine's not making any crazy horsepower or nothing like that, but um, the customer wanted to put that on there when he turboed it, but um, he went ahead and got it, uh, the ECU done up, so we were you know ready for it. So I might as well just throw them on there um, while we were doing this head job. But um, yeah, that looks good. That's real clean. Um, they do, like I said, the spark will be on point now, you know, for if you ever do any, want to do any tuning, especially when you uh, rev this thing up high, or not rev this engine up high, but, you know, revving up high, um, making a lot of horsepower. These are a great option right here. But um, also, it just it's the cleanliness. I mean, who doesn't love a nice, you know, B-series with a coil on plug kit? That looks clean as hell. Um, so, yeah, that's what's up. I like that. Definitely recommend the uh, Speed Factory stuff. Um, there's other nice brands out there too, but um, you know this is quality stuff. This is all, you know, like some billet aluminum or whatever. But yeah, that's nice. So yeah, what I gotta do is just um, finish up the job. Uh, you know, plug everything back up together and start this thing. I'll have to go get some fresh oil for it and some coolant. But um, yeah, I like that. Speed Factory Racing. Yes, with the it's the um, wire harness that we got. I got from Jason Waters. They have an Instagram as well and a um, website. So good stuff. Good stuff. All right, welcome back. Uh, earlier in the video, you saw me working on this Acura Integra here. Um, I went ahead and finished it up. Uh, well, first of all, uh, this was this is Christmas break. Uh, I was working on this. I think I was putting that together uh, the day before Christmas, and um, you know we just Christmas came through, uh, holiday season. Uh, happy holidays, everybody! Um, it's New Year's is this weekend as well. But um, I got this finished up, man. I had to go to the store once they opened back up. I got uh, oil, coolant, and went ahead and just buttoned everything back up. I've already started the car, 
it started right up, uh, no issues at all. Um, as far as you know, the you know any bad coils, or whatever. Those Denso coils I did have sitting. I already had them here in the shop. Um, I've just been collecting them for a while. But um, yeah, everything is good. Um, sounds amazing. Uh, valve adjustment, like this engine sounds so smooth now. Um, like I was saying earlier in the video, the valve adjustment is key for these um, engines, man. But um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna start it up again. I'm gonna let it idle for a bit, make sure the coolant, uh, I've already heard the fans kick on twice. I know everything's good, but um, I'm gonna go drive it in a bit and um, it's ready to ship back to the customer. Uh, we got a lot more to do to this Integra here, but um, this is just, we're doing it in stages and he's ready to get the car back and um, so he, he can have a vehicle. And um, like I said, we got a full turbo kit ready to go on this thing and um, a couple other goodies. But for right now, he's good. He can hit the road. Oh, but most, most of all, most of all, um, you know, I had to do the head job on this and uh, no more oil leaks. Uh, so what it was, um, you know, someone had did the VTEC conversion and they just did it not right. Um, you know, as far as maybe the plug being leaking, the bottom plug where you have to tap off. Uh, tap in uh, might have been leaking there uh, head gasket was wrong not wrong but just uh, there's tricks to do the B20 VTEC correctly without no uh, oil leaks and uh, no issues um, and as far as uh, the valves already touching the pistons I told y'all about that earlier in the video um, but uh, but um, we did have pro one cams that I was gonna throw in there but I'm not gonna do that right now um, we're not trying to go tune right now anyways he wants to hit the road, have a vehicle to drive, but also I don't want to push that engine. I can build him another engine in the future, maybe an LS VTEC, another, do it GSR block, uh, B16 bottom end. You, there's different things we can do, but that B20, I don't want to rev that up high or push it with a lot of PSI because I didn't build that. Um, and w the work that I've seen already with kind of the things that were wrong and not correct, I don't, I don't trust it. Um, so we're just going to send it on low boost when we do turbo it. And um, call it a day on that B20 VTEC. But uh, yeah, man, the Speed Factory stuff is badass. I like that. Um, I explained earlier about, you know, the, the spark time, uh, the, how the spark will be nice and true, you know, spot on. And, uh, you know, because ignition does play a good part, a big part in uh, tuning. Um, but, um, I mean, you can hurt a motor with, you know, with your t uh, ignition timing not right or, uh, you know, faulty um, or going out on you. But um, anyways... Yeah, this is some good stuff here, man. I really like it. Uh, Speed Factory Racing. We got the plate. We got the uh, distributor cap. And uh, this harness. Also, I got this from Jason Waters Tuning. Um, yeah, everything just went well. No issues. I did have to replace these uh, little crush washers here. Um, and a couple other couple wires came undone that were just, I guess, not... Uh, you know connected not a good connection but um yeah this thing oh and also so they had the cams advanced um a few degrees and these are stock gsr cams which is i know you can do that but like i said these were already touching um these were all the valves are already touching previously before when the guy was driving it when this customer was driving it but um i put it back to zero and zero and um, like i said i had to notch the valve reliefs anyway so there's not going to be any clearance issues with these cams anymore but um i just wanted to be safe yeah this is a nice little setup man when i definitely go uh do a nice b-series build in my hatch i'm definitely gonna get this stuff i mean uh plus i mean that just looks badass seeing a uh, you know some coils sitting on top of a b-series valve cover like that so got the denzos oem denzos out of the k-series engines Also went ahead, put the new uh, VTEC solenoid gasket and the new cam cap as well. Well, yeah, no leaks. I've already let this thing run for a while and not a single drop of oil. Um, before you would let it idle and run and you could just watch the oil drip down and drip down the block. So um, it is good to go. No more oil leak as far as the VTEC conversion and we are good to go. I'm gonna ship this thing back to the customer and on to the next.
Yeah, this is the engine running. Everything smooth. Engine sounds good. I don't know if you could tell by the video, but this thing is purring. It sounds nice and good. No abnormal ticking. This thing sounds nice and smooth. Sounds very good, man. Really, really good. Got some, got some type of little squeak over here near the compressor every now and then. Had to check that out. Yeah, this thing sounds so much smoother, you guys. One more oil leak. Like I said, this oil will be just dripping down here. Good to go, man. Thanks for watching, guys. So the next time you see me, guys, I'll probably be doing the EF wagon again. I'll probably try to finish that up um, with all the brake goodies that we're doing, front and rear conversion, uh, the wheel bearings, the extended studs, all that good stuff. I think I've already put the wheel studs in um, inside of the hub, but I do have to put the bearings in, so I'll record that, make some footage of that. But, um... Still got engine stuff back there. Oh, the single cam for the uh, for the EK Coupe, the Civic EX um, with the Y8. I've already dropped all those parts off at the um, machine shop, and we're just waiting on that to get back. And then I'll assemble that engine and put that in. That'll be another episode. But uh, until then, I appreciate you guys. As always, like, subscribe, um, hit the bell, all that good-ish. You know what I'm saying? Thank y'all.